you're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Carl. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Don't go astray. I hear our calling. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Corey O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by our rivals here on this Tuesday, as single to Mayo, no less. But uh, talk about a celebration, could not be happier. I mean, this is like having the Mount Rushmore of Indiana athletics on today as we welcome Jerry and Todd Yeagley, uh, soccer coaches for Indiana University. Guys, thank you so much. How are you? Todd's with us now. Uh, Coach Jerry, I think, is not going to be able to join us, it looks like. But I've uh, got Coach Todd Yeagley with us. Coach, how are you, sir? Hello, can you hear me? You betcha, brother. How are yes, you doing sir. today? Yes, how are you guys? Oh, just wonderful, Coach. How are you, man? I'm doing great, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, great day to sit in and watch a great documentary for certain uh, on BTN, uh, but there's so much more. I used to take it over BTN, by the, day, by the way, as you know. But, uh, man, what a celebration this is, Coach, of not just your, your father but your father and his legacy, but the legacy of IU soccer, something you've continued as well. But just a great celebration of, of Indiana and, and all things that are, are fun. <laughs> That's right. No, it's this, this, uh, this documentary film is, does a great job of, of kind of capsulating our our uh, our program, but you know, in in the in the heart of it, it's 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 capturing the story of you know how you overcome and how you become a varsity program. Um, in our case, and then the, uh, the, the 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 rise to the top, uh, you know, going to the eighty two championship is is really the storyboard. But then how Blue Line and and uh, Tucker and his team. Just did a phenomenal job of, of, of bringing in, you know, other storylines of the program. Um, you know, bringing to light some some uh, some coaches, some players, and the, the character building. It's it's a really good piece, even if you're not, you know, an IU soccer fan necessarily. You're just a fan of sports, or you, you love documentaries in general. Um, you, you'll really enjoy this. I mean, it's kind of a la uh, one of the thirty for thirty uh, type deals. I mean, there, there's there's storylines to it. There's this historical. Uh, it, it, there's just so much. There's drama. There's just all kinds of stuff that that goes into it that makes it uh, worth watching. And it is more than worth watching. But uh, even it's one of those things. Even though you know the ending or outcome, it doesn't matter. You can't wait to still see it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, it's no different than what a great series we're now with Jordan. And I mean, we all know the games that they won and it's the stories behind it. It's, it's the, uh, it's the connecting to the, to the people. Um, it, it's learning things again that you didn't, you didn't know. Um, and, and, and all those stories come to life with, with the great interviews, with the game footage. Um, it's, it's a great mix that keeps you engaged. Um, you know, it, you still, you're, 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 you're watching the film and it's, it's leading to the championship game in the final moments. And it's, it, you, you're so kind of wrapped up with it. You, you obviously kind of forget like what, what's, of course, you know what happens, but uh, it's, it's a bit suspenseful in, in the way they lead up to it. And then, um, you know, again, the, the way they wrap the program and we're able to bring um, it to kind of current day. I mean, they've been filming this, you know, it was probably three years in the making, and you know, have they have clips from our from our seventeen college cup in Philly and 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 kind of showing present day and some home footage. Um, it's some some practice photo or a video. It, it, it's it's really cool on how they they go they go forward and backwards a lot, um, just like a lot of good documentaries in, in time. And this all started back in 73. A lot of Hoosier fans know a lot of this, but some don't. I mean, it started as a club. It was not even a, a, a collegiate sport at IU. It started as a club, but your dad takes a club, and in nine years, nine years is winning a national championship. Already been fighting for national championships, but wins one in nine years. I can't tell people enough. We're talking Division One premier sport. And to go from nine years from a club to, to a national championship, I, that's something that I don't know that's ever been accomplished other than maybe the dawn of sports, but uh, it's incredible. 
Yeah, the uh, the, the story on, on how how the program became Varsity is is a good a good chunk of the early part of the film, um, and that I think a lot of people will learn a lot about. You know, what were the challenges? What, what were the political uh, hurdles to to get a sport to become Varsity in that time? What what the student body had the impact. Um, and the leadership, uh, Jeff Richardson, who was the student body president, um, how important he was with the help of, of some of our current players at that time, uh, Gary Friesen and, and many others. Um, and then locally, Nick Matagouli's not mentioned in the movie, but um, he was very instrumental in, in, in again, kind of strumming up the uh, the interest and, and getting people excited. But the, the, the campaign to become varsity is a really cool plot. Um, within this film, and I think a lot of people just, you know, they start seeing the records in 73, but they do a great job of, of accelerating 63 to 73, the year my father came here, um, and how it turned varsity in 73, and then boom, you know, kind of where we went from there. So it, 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 it encapsulates a lot of decades. Todd, you, you know, as being a former IU athlete, you, you heard his name all the time. But by the time you were here, this thing was rolling and rocking and rolling. But uh, I look at Coach Jagley and I think of Coach Knight. I mean, success-wise, very similar, but even maybe way more so in, in, in a lot of regards. Todd, Todd oh, I'm sorry. Todd, you, I, 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 man, I'm sorry. I you can't <laughs> just say Todd. I know I forgot. Here. I'm used to calling him Coach, so I used to say Coach, but I forgot. <laughs> Hey, Coach Yegley, this is this is Todd Leary here, and, and I I just wanted oh, okay. like I was I was so excited to to hear that you guys were going to be on today because um, I wanted to to people to understand what Coach Knight thought of not just the soccer program but your dad in general, and and I specifically remember um, I used to travel around with the varsity club, and and Dave Martin was very uh, who was president of the varsity club. He was very nice and, and allowed me to play in some. Uh, golf events around the state in the summertime and things like that. And, and traveling with that group was always uh, Bill Mallory or your dad, uh, uh, Coach Yegley. And, and so I got to spend a little bit of time with him. And I'll never forget, like, Coach Knight to me was, you know, anything he said we would have done. Like, we would literally, you hear running through the brick wall, we would have done anything he said. And I'll never forget when, when one time he said to me, he said, hey, as much time as you can possibly spend around Coach Yegley, try to absorb as much as you can from him. He said he is one of the all-time great, not soccer coaches, but coaches that have ever been involved in sport. And I, I thought to myself, the person saying this to me is someone that <laughs> I consider in that category, and he's telling me to take in everything I can from your, from your father. And I was, I'll never forget it. And it's, it put you guys uh, – it put your dad in a, on a pedestal that I don't know <laughs> – I don't know how he could have ever gotten knocked off of it, but he has done nothing but back it up. And, and I know you, you and I played, you know, we were, we were student athletes at the same time here. And um, I, I know what everybody thought of the soccer program back then. And, and I just, I, uh, we were talking about it yesterday uh, on the air is I don't know of a father son coaching duo in college sports that could even come close to ever rivaling what you guys are doing. Like, I don't, I don't, this is, these are records that'll never be touched. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. And, and the comments about my father, you know, I, I think are um, uh, those, those, you know, he and Coach Knight. And, and you think about the years, um, I mean, with, with, with Coach Knight, my father, um, with, with Councilman, um, I mean, we're, we're talking three of, of like the icons in their sport yeah, no um, doubt. across a lot of generations and, you know, it, you, you don't necessarily know when you're in it and you have to look back and go, I mean, these are three of the biggest icons that will always be talked about with their sport and, and the way they're able to change it in many ways and, 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 and bring more uh, popularity or um, impact generations. I mean, people um, understand basketball largely because of what Coach Knight was able to put on the floor and 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 the and, and and so many of those character traits are what you see in Indiana basketball around the state, and I think my father has had a similar impact. Um, and there was a great amount of mutual respect. I mean, people ask me often uh, about my father and Coach Knight, and it was it was a it was a very respectful. You know, their hobbies were different, but they did away from the field might have been different. Um, 
but the, the, the respect for each other and also the discipline that they had. They, they did it in a little bit different ways. But the commonality of, <laughs> <laughs> <Talk and see. laughs> I mean, well, the competitive juices were were equally there. I mean, it's just my, my father, you know, had a different way, um, and that's why we always say you can't you can't always emulate. You got to be your own coach and your own person when you're when you're when you're leading a group. And anyhow, my father, though, the respect he had for the way that he organized his, his teams. And, and we would talk about, I'm, I'm, I'm a big basketball fan myself and the discipline and, and, and the way that it was all about the team and, um, the extra details that go into, to winning games. I mean, those, those same, those same, uh, important core values are what allows any sport to have six any team in any sport as we know so um it's, it was fun to kind of watch it in real time and, and i took away a lot um because again I, I i made a lot of basketball games from a young kid and so yeah that that whole time was unique with coach knight and and, and counselor and my father and um it, and obviously what a special night it was with coach knight coming back um i was there and um it was it was pretty amazing yeah, and we talk about uh, all these things that the, your dad has started, obviously, and, but that's continued. And we've seen so many programs have greatness, and then you know, look, look at UCLA, what a great dynasty they had had at one time. But that is that. This thing continue. You you've managed to continue that, which that in and of itself is is a different battle for fifty years for to do that. But it, it's incomparable. Todd Todd Leary, they just had. I I think they have the number one recruiting class in the country right now. That true. That true, Todd Yegley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it. Uh, yes, by the publication <laughs> has it. I mean, as we say, it, it doesn't mean much. It's, it's nice to put out a couple nice little blurbs, but we all know it until they get here and get this thing together. But yeah, we. I mean, the fortunate thing is we've been able to, to attract you know a lot of talent, but we haven't lost sight of like how it was built, and I think a lot of that is going to be displayed today and the values and what kind of players we look for in kids are, are really um, a modern version of what, how this was built. And, and it, it, it wasn't on talent. Um, this, this program won on um, the ability to fight through and be tougher and whether it was, it was fitter um, or have a mental edge over your opponent. That's what accelerated IU soccer. And then as we got better, my father kept saying, well, then we could really get some horses in the stable. And you're not going to win without them, ultimately, long term. We know that. Uh, we're, we're only as good as, as, the, as, the, as the talent that we're able to bring, but it's the right talent. And, you know, we talk a lot about the right types of kids and not taking a shortcut and not being uh, enamored by talent, um, by, what that, by rather what that talent is able to produce on the, on the field or court. So the, the consistency we're really proud of. I mean, I think if, you know, you look at the, the amount of winning and, and today it's winning's harder than ever um, in all of our sports, but the consistency of being relevant over so many decades, one, I think was a, a testament of my father and how he was able to evolve, which I think every coach at some point, you know, whether it's bringing a new staff member or just them understanding, I got to, I got to change a little bit. And, and how I get to get across to these these kids, but not lose you know your your core values. Same thing with playing style. I mean, you gotta you also have to evolve and grow. And my father did that. Um, you know, that's something that we work hard at here. So yeah, we're we're really proud. It's a good group coming in, um, and you know we're we're it, it's a it's a big responsibility to to keep IU soccer moving forward. And you know that that's what drives me every day. Um, and, and I don't feel that as a burden or a, a to, or pressure. I find that as a great challenge. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. The, str- the, the pressure of maintaining a level of excellence that is uh, uh, beyond everybody else year after year after year for, like Todd said, nearly a half a century. That, that's nuts. But to, to maintain, we are all watching the, the last dance with Michael Jordan, and we see that competitive drive that you have to have to, to maintain championship level. That hasn't left Indiana soccer for 50 years. How do you maintain year after year that level of excellence? Well, you're, you're invested, and not to say that others aren't as much, but 
that when when there's something that you're that passionate about, you that you love it that much. I mean, I grew up with it. I mean, the love I have for IU athletics and in particular our program, you know, drives me. The the why is very clear. I, I've seen, you know, what it is to impact, you know, an 18, 20 year old and see what it does on the flip side. I got to kind of live it, you know. You know, I, I remember being a young kid and, you know, a, a, one of the players that might have played in the 60s or 70s would, you know, pull me aside at a, a gathering and say, he's like, you, you have no idea what your dad and program in, in the coaches, the whole thing, but in particular, my dad and, and, and the way they'd reference it, say, try to change the trajectory of my life. And I would not be able to be doing what I do today. And when you hear that at 10, 11, 12, I mean, it, it, it kind of hits you like, you know, we're, we're looking at a lot of winning and, and the competitive pieces that are going into the program. But when you're able to see the big picture at a young age, it, it gave me a lot of perspective. So, you know, we, we, we don't lose sight of that. We have a lot of, we have a lot of enjoyment, what we do. Um, and I stay really present. That's the only way I, I cannot, um, you know, I, I know of our success. I know obviously what my father's done, but you know, I guess I've lived with pressure a lot when you're a coach's son of the successful coach, you know, every step of the way in my own kind of career, I've had to deal with that. So I've been able to put that in perspective and, and use that as, as a, as a motivator, um, a little bit, I can do this and I'm like, I'm going to do this and use the blueprint that, that, you know, is, is here before it's, you know, surround yourself with great people, um, recruit the right talent, um, bring the family environment into this program and invest in these, in these, these kids and their lives and make them part of yours. And you got a great chance of winning. Um, a lot of things go in between all those, those areas, but that's really what it is. It's, it's not, it's not a complicated way. You just got to make sure that you put everything around these, these players to have, to have the most success. And we, we certainly, that's, that drives us every day. So being very present for me is really how I stay, um, I don't get caught up in, 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 you know, what we need to do this year to keep the program, you know, kind of where it is. And another thing is you've gone through as a coach, the change of players being three, four year players to being one and done. And that includes soccer. We've seen it happen in the IU soccer program the last several years because there's, there's players are so good. They don't stick around long. That's an, a new challenge in and of itself of having refill that cupboard so fast with, with elite talent. It is. It, it's a new challenge, um, you know, but again, I, I'd rather have that challenge. And again, many of my peers are like, you know, some of them are like, oh, Todd, you know, another one you lose to the pros, you know, must be tough. And then some are like, yeah, I wish I had that problem. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're fortunate we get to attract those types of players. I think what we have to be really cognizant, and I think, you know, all of the, you look across different sports, um, the ones that have been able to do it strategically where you, again, it's, it's the, the timing of when you expect one to be, you know, gone sooner or later to, to offset that. So you have some consistency and, um, over the years, you know, we, we work hard with our recruiting with that, but, you know, you still get surprised in a good way. I mean, you know, Jack Mayer, we, we didn't think would be a two year player. He just developed really fast and the interest came quicker than expected. And, and so, you know, in our clock, we had him as more of a three, four year, but I'm, I'm so happy he got the opportunity and he's, he'll, he'll thrive in the professional setting. But we, we do think, we, we think through the recruiting and, 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 and what we do not want to become, um, a program that has that in and out because your best stewards of the program are your upperclassmen. They're the ones that understand what needs to be done. And if you lose that, um, then it's coming from the coaches too much and, and you're not going to win as, as consistently it has to come from the players. Before we let you go, obviously COVID-19 has changed uh, so much for all of us. Uh, I have a daughter that plays high school soccer, going to be a senior. I mean, I'm so hopeful that she's going to get to have their season. I know you've got to be the same for there's so much going on with uh, preparing for a season. How are, are you hopeful that things are going to pick up and, and kind of be semi-normal? Well, the whole spring and summer obviously is, you know, all of the, all of the, and this goes for all of the kids in, in sports right now that are, you know, whether it's high school or club or, or college, I mean, everyone, they're so driven to, in their sport. It's, this is like taking a lot away from a lot of people and in, in their, in their daily routine. 
And you know, I'm optimistic that, you know, the, the, the people that make decisions are, are thinking through all the parameters. Um, you know, I'm, that's not for me to judge. I'm a soccer coach. I'm not a medical, medical expert. Um, but I do know that the, they need, they need structure. They need their team. They need their environment, um, to thrive. And I hope we can get that back sooner or later because it's a big part of what makes these kids go. Um, and so I'm optimistic we can, we can get started on time. Obviously a lot of things have to happen with the schools. I, I do feel that, um, our friends up North, you know, push, push the envelope a little bit, um, Purdue that being, and, uh, it's kind of put a stake in the ground that, uh, things are going to be starting. Uh, it, and, and I think we, you need schools to do that, to, you know, to, to get everyone kind of moving in that direction. So we're, uh, we're optimistic that we'll be on pace this fall and, we want to open that that new stadium renovation, uh, you know, in, in the way that we envisioned it, you know, opening day in, uh, in, in late August. Yes, I'll be looking for my new recliner in the press room. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot more room. We're moving all the all the crazy yahoos out of that press area, so you guys can have a nice working press area. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move them all, all to the other side. So uh, uh, we're pretty excited about that that renovation. It's 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 uh, it's going to be opening here in July. It's come along really well, so we're, we're pretty excited. Looking forward to that, and of course, looking forward to worth the wait at five o'clock today on BTN. Uh, make sure you check that out, uh, Coach Todd Yegley. Uh, I can't thank you enough for always for joining us, always so generous with us with your time. We greatly appreciate you, and uh, look forward to getting back out and watching some soccer, man. Yeah, no, it was great. Thanks for having me. It was good, Todd. Have good connecting with you. I I do remember um, you guys had some some fun teams to watch and, and support during our days together. Um, so it's been fun to to see all your success and those are some some good times. I'm sure it's fun reminiscing when you guys get all together. I bet. Well, I, I remind everybody, you know how good I was all the time. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the president of my own fan club. Well, so, I yeah, keep no. a couple pictures of me in the younger years around the house. It just reminds me if I'm having a tough day. Yeah, I used to be, I used to be pretty fit and pretty decent, um, according to that picture. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I hear you. So no, it's it's been fun to reconnect. So uh, again, thanks for having us, guys. Appreciate all the coverage. And obviously, a big day for IU athletics. BTN's doing their their marathon today and um you know these are just great stories to to get out there for for people that that love their sport in particular iu they'll they'll i think they'll really enjoy today at five o'clock yep we can't wait to see it coach todd yagley joining us from indiana soccer program please tell coach jerry we said hello and uh looking forward to that have a, a great uh rest of your day and uh enjoy the documentary thanks guys appreciate it take care this is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the shows we broadcast anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com.